So you've recently proposed a strategy for the reform of politics in the United Kingdom. It's clear that there are, there's a significant underpinning of ideas and thinking to that strategy. And I wondered if you could explain what, that, what those ideas are. Well, what I've uh, discovered uh, is that there is a, a, a stage of maturation that groups and societies especially can go through. And uh, this is not totally different in principle to the maturation that a person goes through. Right? Or the maturation you might see in the quality of management in an organisation or the maturation of, in the development of knowledge. Uh, things start in a particular way automatically, but then with effort they can be improved. Now, if we look at a society and its political institutions, what you see is that they start with some uh, elite group that dominates. And this is, I call this, uh, uh, the, the, these are the traditional classes. Uh, I call it privileged pluralism. So, uh, in, in in the past, this would be the 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 the, 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 the warriors, the priests, the king. Yeah? Uh, in in modern times, it would be the the, the, the secret police, uh, the the ruling party or the autocrat. Uh, the, the the military is always there. Um, uh, there may be a bureaucratic class, uh, but the, the point is that this group controls society and it, uh, uh, they're, they're, it, it does whatever it wants and it, the main concern are, uh, in politics is uh, intrigues, uh, power intrigues and rivalries between and within those groups. And as long as those uh, are kept under control, it can, that this can persist for a long time. The public suffer, the public are expected to support. The, these, these groups are, no, are, no, are not productive at all. There's no productivity from the military, there's no productivity from the uh, priesthood, there's no productivity from secret police. So these groups consume the, the resources and use uh, people as they wish. And uh, they do so with, with impunity. Uh, eventually that breaks down right? and it breaks down in what I would call a, an age of enlightenment for whatever reason the public slowly matures the mass of people slowly mature and they don't want this sort of inequality and the crucial thing they bring about is the rule of law right? uh, in the rule of law everybody is equal under the law we don't have the rule by decree, by whim, by personality. Uh, I call this stage legitimism. Uh, it's obviously uh, commonly thought of as democracy, uh, but uh, many de so-called democracies are defined really by, by voting. Actually, that's not really what's the essence of this change. The essence of this change is this move to accepting impersonal control in personal control by, by, by laws, by a constitution. Um, if we look at a country like Thailand, for example, uh, they've had like 18 or 20 constitutions and a dozen coups or more. Uh, they see themselves as a democracy, but of course it's quite clear the elites have not subjected themselves to the rule of law. They don't, you know, if you can change the constitution every few years, it's not really functioning as a constitution. Uh, the, 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 once people have reached this phase, right, uh, they have the potential to prosper. Right? They have the potential but not the certainty because in order to prosper, uh, people have to become self-reliant. The, uh, the, 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 in the early stages, there was a sort of dependency and paternalism, and quite often in the legitimist phase, um, uh, socialist ideas hold sway. In other words, instead of the king looking after the mass of people, uh, the government will look after everybody. So 
uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, there's, a, there's a need for a new sort of ideology uh, which uh, emerges uh, based on, on success in society through hard work and through reliance. And, and this, of course, requires uh, to be built on legitimism because uh, in the previous phase, if you don't have rule of law, once a, a businessman does well, uh, some wealthy person uh, just confiscates the money or has them, has them thrown in jail, takes uh, all their wealth. So you have to get legitimism before you can have what I call legitimate uh, individualism. Individualism does represent a significant development in society. It's a triumph over socialism, really. Um, the, uh, the, the, of course, there is a problem with individualism, which is as individuals pursue their own uh, well-being, their own activities, they uh, dump bads on society. They dump problems, they, as we all know, these ecological problems. They, 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 they take advantage of the mass of people. They use social goods. Uh, this is not abnormal. Uh, it, it, it's normal. In fact, it's difficult as an individual actually to know the impact of, of what you're doing on society. So uh, what you have here is a uh, concern that, that common goods, whether it's the, the, the fields, the air, uh, the beauty spots, uh, uh, <coughs> public roads, whatever, are being uh, spoiled. This is the, I've been called the tragedy of the commons. Mm. The big development here is that you have to scientifically investigate right? and you have to find out exactly what's going on uh, and you have to work out fair and reasonable ways to improve and to control the situation. Uh, this is like the, the scientific era in, in, in politics. This is science in politics. It's not, it's not science making political decisions is actually science working out what sort of regulation enables both prosperity while protecting, protecting people. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the result of this is that we now have a, a more complex society. Right? Uh, we, as well as the uh, previous ruling classes, the military, the priests, the uh, aristocrats, uh, we have a extremely diverse uh, middle class because you have a whole range of different occupational groups and uh, uh, industrial sectors and educational sectors and so on. It's a very diverse society. Um, so we've got a, 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 a broader pluralism. It's no longer pr privileged pluralism. But you've got a situation where uh, money becomes very important and you end up having what I would call a, a financialization of society. Right? Really, whereas before, if you had power, you could get money through plunder, through confiscation, through taxation. In this current stage, if you have money, you can get power. So you have money buying the politicians. And uh, so I call this plutocratic pluralism. In other words, uh, it is a pluralism, but many, many groups have very little say. And that the, uh, the, 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 there are vested interests in society that have a far greater influence on political choices than would be ideal or that seems fair and just to most people. Um, this will go too far because uh, it's like a fly. Well, there's no restraint. So the wealthy become even more wealthier. The, the politicians even more depend on. The, the, the politicians themselves want to become financially wealthy. Uh, and uh, eventually, uh, it becomes too much. It, 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 it's, it's a bit similar to the situation with the privileged uh, pluralism, where uh, you might have thought a, a good king could, uh, good rulers, a good secret police could keep society 
comfortable, but in, in fact, at the end of the day, they always go too far. And the same applies here with vested interests. And they are not thinking of the public. And eventually, the consequence in this situation would be some sort of economic disaster. The response to that economic disaster has to be for the public to actually see what is going on and say, look, we can't, we can't run society like this. Um, not for the public to make choices. The best way that choices are made are, are through uh, the legitimist methods and through individualist uh, methods and rationalist methods. In other words, through, through, through science, through, through what the people uh, want as a majority, through individual initiative. That's how society evolves. But something new has to occur, which is a, a willingness to take responsibility for how those choices are in fact made. Uh, in my view, we may be moving into that phase. I call it the conventionalist phase. Uh, it's, uh, the sort of standards are pretty common sense. You just don't want politicians to have rights and powers that ordinary people don't have. You don't want vested interests to have undue influence. Uh, you don't want to have uh, the accounting in government to be uh, uh, effectively uh, criminal. You don't want to have politicians not knowing even what laws pass. So convention, the conventionalist phase is about improving the standards within which political activity occurs. I think there's further to go because I think the public can become more involved in, in political choices themselves. There are ways. And I think the level of integrity can increase. And there are two further stages that I see as potentially developing. Uh, I call the, the next one the transcendentalist phase. It'll be a new enlightenment. And uh, eventually, uh, I think there will be a, uh, a communalist phase. We, we won't, we'll have politicians who actually know about the impacts of their decisions. We'll have what I would call a uh, devolved local politics. Um, we'll have... Uh, uh, um, inequality, but it'll be an acceptable inequality. Mm. So that's the the situ that's the the maturational process I see. Now, the most important aspect about this maturational process is that it's a uh, each stage is traumatic. In other words, to go from elite group domination to democracy and rule of law there's always revolutionary turmoil, almost always some sort of violence, even if it can be kept limited. Uh, moving to individualism generates tremendous ideological strife. Uh, the, 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 the eventually getting the scientific era in politics, is you have the tragedy of the commons. You end up having uh, shocking pollution. You have this, you see this in uh, uh, China, for example, at the moment. Uh, so the, uh, the, 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 this, is, this is inevitable. If there isn't a tragedy of commons, you don't bother. Right? So, so this will occur. Uh, the, the financial of society leads to increasing inequalities and eventually economic disaster. You need the economic disaster to persuade people that they, that they really have to be responsible. They can't allow politicians to function in a paternalist way in which they really look after themselves and their own class. Uh, to move to the transcendentalist phase, I think there'll be a spiritual crisis. I don't quite know what it will be like, but that would be expected. And I think the final phase will be a sort of tragedy of individuality. Uh, basically, the, the, the whole issue is that there is some fundamental conflict between being a unique individual and actually finding the community that, that, that suits you and that this somehow has to be resolved. It's resolved by moving to smaller communities in some sort of way. So I anticipate maturation. We will get a responsible devolved politics. Uh, many countries have not got, even reached phase, stage two. I think the Western societies have reached stage four. Uh, there are three more stages to go. Thank you very much for that, Dr. Kingston.